this is like a paradigm shift, right? We yeah. have to be able to to shift our way of being and step into their world and, and obviously not just make it all about us. You know, I, I don't know how to approach this question without upsetting people, but um, especially I notice a lot of this in big cities mm. where I see dogs with dyed hair and exotic haircuts and like it's almost as though people are taking the human concept of fashionizing dogs and you know, it's, I just, I'm curious, what's your thoughts about the impact on the dog when dogs are actually being brought into such a human type existence that they're getting hair dyed and, and you know, nail polish and just all this, like, it just seems to me to be so unnatural for a dog. Um, is there a point at which that's okay? And is there a point at which it is maybe stressful to the dog? I would say it's a complete invasion and disrespect to dogs as a species. Um, I, I don't, I don't see anything positive coming from it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the dog is concerned, dog, dogs are living in a human world. And that's, that's the dysfunction is we take very little time or thought or energy of how we can improve their lives. It's really much more so about what they can do for us, how they can show up for us. It's, it's it, I yeah. was, I was just going to interject. It, I see that, that the dogs have become, I don't know if it's the right word, but like trophies, look how cool my dog is i got a purple dog with a mohawk and it goes to the beauty salon and it eats um dumplings and uh bagels with me and uh, probably espresso too <laughs> I, I just like i i i see this like especially in places like la new york chicago you know, it seems like the, the, the big cities have this pooling, it's prevalent. Eff uh, pooling effect where people are so disconnected from each other that they actually almost are on the border of sexualizing their relationships with dogs. And what I mean by that is not necessarily the act of sex, but it's like... I can't deal with human beings, so I'm going to have a dog and pretend it's my wife or my husband or my child. And, and it's like the dogs are being pushed into, again, an anthropomorphic role. Yeah. And it seems to me to be so unnatural. I mean, like I said, I grew up on a farm and I grew up on Vancouver Island in the wild. There's wolves there. There's coyotes. I mean, I, I've I've lived in nature. I know what the natural state of animals is like when I'm there. And when I come see what's happening in cities, it's almost as though we're projecting our loneliness, our confusion, our illness, and our sickness into the lives of animals to such a degree that it, it's, it's just, I, I just can't help but think that the poor dogs must just feel like they've been incarnated into a hell of some kind. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> okay, we agree then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's um it's truly what what is the case and and the pooling effect within metropolitan big city environments is it's it's everywhere. Yeah. Um and and dogs it, it's it's really a fascinating uh how it's developed over time when you looked at like the pharaoh dogs and um and these dogs that were in the Chinese dynasties, yes. you know. Your dog was literally your symbol of how great you were. Mm. It was the ultimate accessory. Mm. And now look what we have in gang culture. 
having the biggest gun, having the biggest, you know, uh, car, the biggest rims, the biggest mm-hmm. wad of cash. No, 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 no. That's not what really shows up as your status and how wealthy and how great you are within your culture, within your gang. It's your dog. Yeah. How or, many fights has your dog won? Yes. How how muscly is your dog? How yeah. beefed up? How how you know whatever the the confirmation of the dog? It's it's this is what we're and it shows up in all different areas of society, yeah. right? And then and then you have your you know your very high kind of affluent you know poodles walking around in Chanel handbags yes, that are dyed purple. That's, that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. Yeah, it's. I, I look at it and I just feel sad for yeah. the animals. I'm yeah. like, you know, you've taken the animal's life away. It's abuse. It, it's it's sad. It's it's it, look to to put this into perspective. Imagine if dogs started capturing and breeding us, and made us go everywhere on our hands and knees and eat off the dirt etc i mean humans would hate it but if we spoke human language and they spoke dog language we'd be trying to say listen asshole why do you keep doing this to me i'm not a right. fucking dog and and the and the, there would just be such a complete communication breakdown exactly and and that and that's what's occurring so this really exactly this is an invitation for people to you know, I mean, we're, we're looking at all the many angles, which is so important because these are things that a lot of people don't really think about. Yeah, um, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But it is, it is an invitation. It is uh, an encouragement to start to learn, um, you know, what, what, what truly is my dog all about? What are their needs? Because... Let's be clear. Dogs have needs. They don't have wants and desires. Mm. They need very specific things from us as the humans, the ones that are truly cut out and fit in this time and space to be responsible for them and guide them healthfully and successfully. And so we need to start showing up in that and embodying that in all of the ways, Mm -hmm. you know, and that... And that's really the steps that need to be taken um, in order to, to, to shift this, you know, this, it, it, this is like a paradigm shift, right? We yeah. have to be able to, to shift our way of being and step into their world and, and obviously not just make it all about us.